Carly, um, Carly will never be able to li to live independently. Carly will always need a lot of structure and support. It would actually, I think, be rather cruel to throw Carly out in the world and expect her to function like other people function because of the limitations she's got to um, go through every day. Um, Carly has problems with memory. She has problems with judgment, with reason. Carly has problems with perception and how she sees the world is much different than how most people view the world. Of course, Carly can't understand money because math is one of the areas that's very weak for Carly as it is with most individuals with fetal alcohol syndrome. So um, we have to help her to count out her money the night before. We brought home what we believe to be a very healthy baby girl. We never really understood that Carly had like a medical condition, like a, certainly a lifelong medical condition. Now we know what it is. Now we know she has fetal alcohol syndrome and we understand through all the research that's being done that these are some of the limitations these folks have. They're not there. She's priceless air rocks now. <laughs> Am I making the right choices? Am I asking too much? Because sometimes he appears so normal. And of course, all of the records that I brought from the hospital stated that the mother drank, stated that she did drugs, stated that there was no prenatal care and you send him with two dollars into the store and he came out and he looked at me and he said I don't know how much that is I don't know what to buy and everybody feels because they have all their little fingers and their little toes well baby looks okay to me must be all right not true not till you get into school not till you have to put that brain in play the effects of alcohol on a developing child are all too real for Lynn and her adopted son. Her son suffers from fetal alcohol syndrome caused by his birth mother's alcohol use during pregnancy. When a mother drinks, she exposes her baby to alcohol. Beer, wine, hard liquor, wine coolers, all can cause birth defects. The National Organization for Fetal Alcohol Syndrome in Washington, D.C. works to help the thousands of children and families whose lives are impacted by fetal alcohol syndrome. Uh, the, the latest figures suggest that as many as 12,000 newborns every year are affected with a full fetal alcohol syndrome, and then as many as three times uh, greater uh, are affected uh, by alcohol-related uh, birth defects or alcohol-related neurodevelopmental disorder. So all told, in the neighborhood of 50,000 newborns every year are affected. Scientists know that all people affected cannot be identified by physical features alone. But alcohol-related birth defects were first recognized because of the way severely affected children looked. Okay, now your ears. Only doctors can make a correct diagnosis of fetal alcohol syndrome. The facial features of FAS include small eyelid openings, short upturned nose, long upper lip from nose to mouth with a thin red border and a deficient central groove, reduced head size, Fetal alcohol syndrome affects brain development as well. In San Diego, California, Dr. Terry Jernigan researches the effects of alcohol on brain development. It was known that there were certain anomalies of brain development that occurred in these, in especially the severest form of fetal alcohol um, syndrome. And uh, one of the most striking of those were, were abnormalities of the midline of the brain uh, including uh, complete agenesis of the corpus callosum. You see here this curved white structure in the midline of the brain that we see in this 
uh, 12-year-old normal individual is the corpus callosum. That's the normal uh, size and shape of the corpus callosum. You can see that in this case, which is a 14-year-old fetal alcohol syndrome case, uh, there really is no such structure. There is no corpus callosum. This we refer to as agenesis of the corpus callosum. This is a case which we would call dysgenesis of the corpus callosum. You can see there is a faint, you can see that the structure is there to some extent. There are parts of it that are there, but it's much thinner, much reduced in size relative to the normal corpus callosum here. Tell me this, what are you going to be when you grow up? Dr. Luther Robinson is a pediatrician in Buffalo, New York, who is familiar with the identification and treatment of FAS. People who have fetal alcohol syndrome have eyes that are smaller than normal, and that's because alcohol affects the developing eye at it, as it comes out of the brain. Um, people who have fetal alcohol syndrome have smaller heads than average, and that's called microcephaly, and again, that reflects the uh, impact of alcohol or the byproducts of alcohol on the developing brain and nervous system. Um, people who have fetal alcohol syndrome, a number will have differences in the lines in their hands. And those lines in their hands uh, represent fetal movement. And the fetal hand starts to move at about eight weeks after the baby is conceived. And so we know that movement depends on how the nerves go to the muscles and the muscles start to make the uh, contractions and pull on the tendons and so forth and so on. again we're talking about a problem of differences in movement long before the baby is even born sometimes before a woman even knows that she's pregnant The, the profiles of children uh, or, or, and teenagers and adults who have fetal alcohol syndrome relate to difficulties with problem solving. If you visited my apartment and I said, get the knives and forks, you would think the knives and forks likely are in the kitchen, in the cupboard, in a drawer, with the spoons. And that's how we would problem solve, uh, solve that problem, that challenge. But for a person who has fetal alcohol syndrome, some of those associations don't seem to fit. So that problem solving is especially difficult. So a matter, whereas you and I just take for granted, go to the kitchen, look in the drawer, pull it open, look for the spoons and forks, and here's a knife, that doesn't happen with um, some people with fetal alcohol syndrome. Pull out the knife, it's working, working almost by trial and error to come up with an answer. And that's just not an effective or efficient way to do problem solving. And that's one of the challenges of people who have fetal alcohol syndrome. Scientists like Dr. Kathy Sulik at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill are working to find out how alcohol interferes with development. They have discovered that the facial features of FAS can be reproduced in mice. In our laboratory, our research has shown that alcohol kills some cells in the brain. It kills them um, in just specific regions. For example, it kills the cells that will make up the midline of the brain, the cells that are involved in connecting one hemisphere to the other. If we treat embryos at a slightly later stage with high doses of alcohol, we get effects on different parts of the brain. So the spectrum of abnormalities that alcohol can cause and what you see in any one individual very much depends on the pattern of the mother's drinking because different cells in the brain are sensitive at different periods of time. It's important because people don't know they're pregnant yet at those stages and some of the most severe problems that alcohol can cause can be caused by insult very, very early in development. 
we've mostly worked with really early stages of development, stages that would correspond to the third and fourth week of human development. It's a time when the human embryo is about the size of Roosevelt's ear on the dime. So it would only be about that long. Sometimes with uh, animal studies, you don't really feel very comfortable extrapolating from mouse to man, for example. But we know that at the stages when alcohol can cause very severe damage to the developing brain and face, that the mouse embryo and the human embryo are very, very similar. This shows a mouse embryo at a time that would correspond to early in the fourth week in human development. The mouse looks very similar to the human at this stage. This is the developing face and brain. Here's the developing heart. It would begin to beat at about this stage in development. The part of the embryo that alcohol uh, selectively affects at this stage in development is right along the edge of this portion. And here we can see that the cells that comprise the edge there are stained dark blue. That shows us that those cells are dead or dying. Those cells will eventually form the center of the face and also the center of the brain. And that's the area that's severely affected in children with fetal alcohol syndrome. If we look at a mouse embryo at a slightly later stage, it should normally look like this. The eye should be here. One of the nostrils should be there, the other there. And this is the area where the mouth is. In an affected embryo whose mother was treated with high doses of alcohol, we see that that portion of the face is quite abnormal. It looks too narrow in the midline because it's missing part of its cells. This normal individual, we should see this central structure. In one that is affected, we see that that central structure is missing. This tissue should end up contributing to the center of the adult brain, that is, the corpus callosum. Alcohol damages not only the brain, but basically every organ system that we have. Um, we found that it can make facial malformations that are very severe, like cleft lip. They can have problems with their hearts, ventricular septal defects, that's more commonly referred to as holes in your heart. Uh, they can have problems with their kidneys, for example, missing kidneys or kidneys that are much too small. Certainly, learning disabilities are probably uh, at the, what we consider the, the minor end of the spectrum of defects caused by alcohol in terms of severity, but it certainly isn't minor in terms of the effect that it has on an individual's life. Alcohol-related birth defects last a lifetime. For Linda and the thousands of other parents who struggle with the permanent effects of FAS, the future remains unclear. I worry about whether we'll be able to hold on a job whether he'll be able to go into the store and know what he can buy for 20 bucks. Yeah, I hope that he makes it on his own. I want him to have it all. So that's my biggest hope, is that he has a job, and he has children, and he has a happy life. Doctors and scientists don't know what a safe level of alcohol is for a developing child. Health advisors warn any woman who is considering pregnancy or is pregnant to avoid the use of any alcohol.